A few days ago, I uploaded a video that explains my three-step process for getting your dog to not jump on you. A common question that I got from that video was my dog is pretty decent at not jumping on me, but terrible at jumping on guests that come to my house. What do I do? So I am going to read into that a little bit, and when you say that your dog is decent at not jumping on you, I take that to mean that they still do sometimes. If that's true, that's where I would suggest starting. We want to make sure that our dog is great at not jumping on us because that's going to be a minimum requirement for them to be able to handle that stimulation level of somebody new and exciting coming to the house. Make sure your dog is proof for all of these situations such as you coming home from work, you bending down to take off your shoes, you petting them, or anything else that might encourage them currently to jump up on you. I would also suggest taking this to an extreme level where you do weird things around your house to make sure that your dog doesn't jump on you afterwards. So zoom and run to a different room or do something like a starfish jump. Yes. And then encourage your dog to have that uncued sit behavior afterwards. <laughs> yes. If we can really prove this behavior with our dog and get them to a point where they almost never jump on us, it's gonna go a long ways for helping them not jump on our guests because it's behavior that they've practiced and had been reinforced for so many times. Yes. 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 The next thing I would suggest is that you make a list of family members or friends that you trust to help you work on this. We want to generalize that behavior amongst a wide variety of people so that our dog thinks it applies to everyone. So we all have that uncle or that parent that doesn't really respect our wishes when it comes to training our dog. For now, I suggest not inviting that person over. Instead, make a list of four or five people that you really trust and that you think might follow instructions and help you work on this so your dog understands that the same rules apply to everyone. Once you have that list, I recommend that you pre-send a text with written instructions. One of my favorite ways to phrase this message is to say something along the lines of we're working on jumping with our dog because we want them to be safe around kids and around elderly. We would really appreciate if we could schedule a few times for you to come over to our house and help us work on this. There's only two instructions. If our dog jumps on you, please turn your back or walk away. If instead our dog greets you appropriately by either keeping their paws on the ground or by sitting, please reward them immediately. I would suggest pre-deciding what you want that reward to be. So it could be treats, praise, or even affection, but I would keep that cohesive amongst all the guests. I find that phrasing it in this way really helps for a variety of reasons. First, by sending it in advance, you are warning your guest that they're likely to be jumped on, so you're making sure that they're okay with that. I think it's really important that we are clear that that's likely to occur. Next, by including kids and elderly in your message, you're explaining why this is so important to you. It's not just a nuisance behavior that you're trying to get rid of, it's actually a safety concern. Nobody wants to be the monster that encourages a behavior in our dog that might later on hurt a child or a grandma, so I find that including this can really help get buy-in. And then lastly, by providing this instructions in really clear way where you're saying if, then, it makes it easy for your guests to remember and to follow. If my dog jumps, they get ignored. If they do whatever the desired behavior is, they get rewarded. By phrasing it in this way, there's not six things that they need to remember. There's just two simple requests. If you have multiple people follow these same instructions, then your dog is going to generalize the skill and realize that in order to get attention or the reward from anybody that it meets, it has to offer this desired behavior rather than jumping up. And then the last thing that I would add to this is that the first couple repetitions, when you have people come over, I wouldn't start at the front door. Typically, entryways can be quite narrow. There's a lot of commotion because the doorbell just rang. Everybody's excitedly greeting each other, taking off jackets and leaning down to take off shoes. This can be a really, really stimulating environment for our dog, and it might not be something that they're ready for. So I prefer to set them up for success by keeping them out in the yard when the guest first comes in, or at least in a separate room. Once your guest is comfortably in the house, in a room where they have space to move around and turn their back or walk away if your dog does, or when they do, jump on them. I find that this is a lot easier for them to handle. As your dog gets better at this skill and stops jumping up so much, then start greeting people right at the front door. If possible, it is really helpful if you can have somebody come over for a five minute session every single day for a couple weeks, but if that's not reasonable, at least try to do it as much as you can. 
If you haven't watched it yet, I'll link my three steps for stopping jumping tutorial here. In the next few days, I'm also going to upload a video showing real training sessions where I taught Louie and Diesel not to jump on me. I'd love to hear in the comments if you found this helpful or if you have any more questions. Happy training!